Patty Possums will me again. It appears as though yesterday's technical video I did was a bit of a hit with uh, quite a lot of views. So I thought, okay, if that's what you like, and many of you fed back, you'd be interested to see more. I thought I would. So today, let's talk about front end treatment on Silver Shadow 2. We've talked about in the past how Silver Shadow started off with chrome bumpers and there were variations in the use of the grill and the, uh, the vents below the headlights depending on various years. But I thought we would specifically hone into the Silver Shadow 2 or Bentley T2, which of course was for all intents and purposes, the same thing. So here is an American Silver Shadow, well, actually this is a Silver Wraith 2, but it, let's call it a Silver Shadow 2 for the sake of this exercise. And you'll see the front of the car. Now, the first thing to note, even though the entire world had these later style chrome and rubber bumpers, the Silver Shadow 2 for American specs, had a very protruding front bumper by as much as about two, maybe even two and a half inches. And when you're looking for it, you'll see it because the biggest clue is this line in the bumper. If this was a rest of the world spec car, this bumper would sit much further back and then this... Uh, line in the bumper would sit all the way back to the grill. So if, you're, if you've got any, a North American spec car and you're wondering why that line is like that, then that's the reason why. So um, now let me just have a look. In fact, let me, let's go over and have a look at a European spec Shadow 2 and then we can alternate backwards and forwards. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the car has these really cute brush headlight wipers. This was actually a European thing that started, but then came out standard in 1978 forward. Shadow 2, of course, started in 77, but for some reason these didn't come standard until 78. But once again, not for the North American market. So the Europeans, Australians, Japanese, they all had these cute little uh, brush wipers, which are actually made of horse hair, a mane from a horse. Um, and I think they're a wonderful touch. But going back to what I was showing you on the other car, you can immediately see the difference here in the offset of the bumper. The other car, the spacing back here is all the way out to here. And that's because the American spec car has the, what's known as five mile an hour bumpers. The bumpers are actually the same. It's the brackets behind them. The rest of the world car, cars had steel brackets Whereas the American spec cars had a type of shock absorber, which allowed the bumper to get pushed back at a five mile an hour impact. What's different of course, is the depth of these little scuttle panels because the American bumpers st stick out further. The U S cars had to have these much deeper. And don't worry, I can jump backwards and forwards between cars so you can compare that. The big, the, the most, or the other the mo the thing that's pretty notable on these is the lower air dam and the spotlights. Sorry, I apologise, I see some bugs on that uh, number plate support. So, for the rest of the world cars, they introduced a an air dam and... It actually had a couple of functions. 
Yes, there was the actual technical function that it limited airflow underneath the car. But believe it or not, one of the main reasons was to just give the car a cleaner, smoother, and more bolder look. If I switch over to an American car over there, it kind of looks a little bare underneath. Um, if, if I go down, a bit hard from this, well, actually, let's go in a bit closer. You, from down here, you start to see all the suspension components. It's not really that attractive. So by fitting the air dam, we were able to cover that. And you see the whole front has a nice, bold, masculine statement. Now with the uh, spotlights or the fog lights, they were an option. Well, I mean, they were always an option, but in terms of being underneath the bumper for uh, Shadow 2, they were an option, but they kind of looked so good that very quickly they became a type of de facto standard. The other thing you'll notice is the position of the number plate. On rest of world cars, the number plate plinth is underneath the bumper. Whereas on American cars or North American cars, they're mounted on the face of the bumper. And the reason for that is, is because the bumpers stick out so much, by leaving the number plates underneath, they were somewhat obscured by the protruding bumpers. So imagine if I was standing closer here, the bumper would stick much further out and start to obscure the plate. So doing that comparison again, if you have a look, if you look at the width of these scuttles and the depth of this crease line on the bumper, and then I go over here, you can see a huge difference in the depth of, or width of that scuttle. And of course, how much further the bumper actually sticks out. The grill, the face, everything else is the same. I personally prefer the European look because I think the front bumper does protrude a little too much aesthetically. Fortunately, they didn't do it too bad. It's not like the ridiculous difference that Mercedes had on their sedans and their convertibles of the same era. Now, another thing you might find interesting is that with Shadow 2, these wiper arms are actually recessed so this was stamped into the body if you go to every american spec car not all of them but sorry every american spec, spec car had this and they simply filled in and what i was going to say that if you look at some you can actually see where that little impression is kind of popping through i didn't see it on that one I think I saw it previously on this one. This is an American spec T2. There you go. Now that's not a rust bubble. That's where they actually filled in that recess or divot, if you like, which normally takes the wiper arm. And if you watched my previous video, I talked about the lead wiping process that filled that. Just to clear it, clarify, in Australia, the UK, we used to call it lead wiping. I believe in the US, they call it lead loading, but it's the same thing. Now, there was, there's also some question then, well, should the car have an air dam or not? I personally think they look very good with them. And as you'll see on this T2, we fitted one. And I don't think you can categorize it as being a modification, only because when you go right down to the history, the Shadow 2 was designed to have a front air dam. It was simply the American or North American market 
that elected to delete it. So I think fitting it doesn't in any way, in my opinion, categorize it as a modification per se, because I think it looks a lot better than seeing all those suspension bits underneath. And of course you might ask, well, why did they delete it? And the reason was a fairly simple technical one. North American spec cars had catalytic converters fitted and they did have a problem with the catalytics getting extremely hot. So they felt that it was so hot as, uh, as far as to go to say that you could actually get the carpet on the driver's side smoldering if you left the car idling for a long periods of time. So Rolls-Royce elected to delete the air dam so as to maximize airflow underneath the car. Okay, so there we have it. For those of you who know me, no introduction is necessary. For those of you who have just joined, my name is Rod Sala, and I'm the owner and founder of the Park Ward Motor Museum, and you can always reach me at park-ward.com.